Good morning, men, and welcome to another episode of Man Up with DeBell Industries. My name is Randy DeBell, and this whole thing, well, what is it all about? It's to light a fire under men, to kick men in the butt, because the more you get into God's Word, the more you realize, wow, I'm missing it. The more I get into God's Word, I realize there's so much more I can do for my family, for my community, for my church. And am I doing it? And the number one thing we can do for our family is to pray for them. To get up early every morning, spend time in God's Word, and pray specific things over our family. So today is part two of prayer. If not you, who? And I tell you, I'm, I'm going to be hard on you guys today because I'm hard on myself. And God has been kind of correcting me in, in a lot of things that I do, things I say. But this is crazy, guys. You know, if we really want to do something, we will find the time to do it. Whether it's looking on social media, uh, looking at hot rods, uh, sports, activities, whatever it is. If I want to do it, I will find the time to do it. And I realized there's times in my life when I had no desire to pray. I had no desire to get up and read God's Word. But when it became real, alive, and living, and I realized the power of prayer, the power of life and death in my prayers, of health, of success, of victory, in my prayers, it got me excited about praying. And I can honestly tell you, I can't wait for tomorrow morning. You know, I pray throughout the day. I talk to God throughout the day. But it's that special one-on-one -on -one time that's set aside just me and Him. Where we talk, we laugh, and we're together. It is a glorious thing. So let's talk a little bit about prayer, man. Answered prayer is all about a relationship. It's a two-way street. I thought about this. I thought about Helen. I thought, what if, you know, wow, we'll be married 39 years this July. What if I just talked to her when I needed something? Hey, woman, I need some sweet tea over here. Hey, woman, I need some clean underwear. Hey, woman, when is supper going to be on the table? Mm, I can tell you right now. I'd probably have two black eyes, and we would have been married about 38 and a half years. But it's a relationship for, for us to communicate to each other, to us to talk and to love and admire each other. Man, we've got to communicate. It's a two-way street. It isn't just, Helen, you better give, 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 give. I need, I need, I need, I need. And so many times with prayer and with God, that's the way men People, Christian men, look at it. Let's talk a little bit about that. Here's a statement. Some of you will not agree with this, but I have scripture to help back it up. Some of you will think, Randy, you're a crazy man. Man, I don't care. Uh, if you're not living a godly life, if you're not living for God a godly life, don't expect God to answer your prayers. <clears throat> agree with that? You disagree with that? If you're not living a godly life, don't expect God to answer your prayers. Here's what I see so much, and I've been that way in my life, but we have humanized God to be like this Santa Claus. And when the crap hits the fan, oh, oh, my little one is sick and in the hospital. And man, oh Lord, save my son, help my son, heal my son. I will be a missionary to Uganda. I will never sin ever again if you just heal my son so we can bring him home. A lot of people live their life that way. Uh, a lot of Christians, well, so called Christians, they're not Christians, but they say, I can get drunk. I can get high, I can cuss a blue streak, use the Lord's name in vain, commit adultery, just have sex with anybody, anytime, anywhere, and just be a rotten person. But yet when I need God, He'll be there. <laughs> hmm. You know, God is there for us. 
He loves people. He was there for that thief on the cross. Remember, there was two thieves on, hanging on either side. And one turned to him in his dying last breath. And he made it to heaven. The other one mocked him and rejected Jesus Christ. But let's talk a little bit about this. Let's go to our anchor. Let's go to God's word. Psalms 37, 23 says this, The steps of the godly are directed by the Lord. He delights in every detail of their lives. It says the steps of the godly. It doesn't say the steps of the heathen, the steps of the sinner, the steps of the casual Christian. It says the steps of the godly. Do I have another scripture to back that up? You bet I do. Psalms 55, 22 says, give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. The godly to slip and fall. Once again, it doesn't say the heathen, the sinner, or the casual Christian. I'm just going to slide into, into heaven someday. It says he will not permit the godly to slip and fall. John 8, 31, 32. Now this is Jesus talking. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples. If you are truly my disciples, if you keep obeying my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You are truly my disciples if you keep obeying my teachings. What's obeying God's teachings? Living a godly life, looking at his word, and living that way. And I can only be godly with God's help. I'm rotten. I'm lustful. I'm a liar. I'm selfish without Jesus Christ and God in my life. I can only do it with him. You know, prayer is worthless gibberish. You might as well as be praying to this hammer right here. It is worthless gibberish unless you believe three things. You know, we laugh and mock at the natives that have some wooden idol or some god or something they pray to, but we can be just like those natives. You know, we've made other things in our lives gods. But prayer can be worthless gibberish as if we're praying to a hammer at times. But there's three things that we've got to believe to see our prayers answered. Here's the first thing we've got to believe. The first thing is this, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he won complete victory on the cross over sin, death, hell, and the grave. He is victorious. He is alive. And I have asked him to live in my heart and rule my life. That I have put him first in every decision, in everything I do, in every action, in every interaction. That I wake up in the morning and say, Lord, use me. Use me. Use me today to point people to you. Not to Randy. Not to some church but to Jesus and to God the Father. Here's a verse for you. Revelations 1, 18 and 19. This is an amplified version of the Bible. When I saw him, and they're talking about Jesus. John is talking about Jesus. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. And he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Absolute deity, the Son of God. And the ever-living one, living in and beyond all time and space, I died. But see, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of absolute control and victory over death and of Hades, the realm of the dead. Jesus Christ is Lord and has won a victory over everything. Everything. Death. Hell, the grave, sickness, poverty, 
He has won victory over those things. Why? For us. So we could live a blessed life. The second thing we have to believe to get our prayers answered is this, is God is good. God is a good, loving Father that wants more for you than you could ever hope, dream, or imagine. Here's some verses to back that up. Psalms 119.68, this is talking about God, and it says, You are good, and you do only good. Teach me your decrees. Ephesians 3.20, once again in the Amplified Amplified Version of the Bible. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. In John 10.10, 10, proving he's a good father, a good God. It says the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus says my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. We don't have to go through life stumbling and bumbling, sad, depressed, addicted, and sick. We can have victory in these areas. There's still going to be a battle. There's still going to be a war raged. But we have victory. We have victory. We win every time. The third thing you must believe, we all must believe to have our prayers answered, is this. The Bible is all true and completely relevant for our lives today. God's word is for me. It's for you. Last night, I was going through the channels on TV, and I came across an old Billy Graham classic, it's called. And here's Billy Graham back in 19, early 80s, 82, 83, I think it was. He's preaching in a stadium in Boston. And this place is packed. It's full. And what is he preaching? The simple gospel. What's he sharing? God's word. And it was powerful. Here it is, decades old. But everything he said was relevant and true and right for 2019. It was real. And it was powerful. And there at the bottom of the screen was a new 800 number where people could call and give their heart to Jesus Christ and be prayed for. Even though that sermon was decades old, It's still powerful and full of life. Why? God's word. It's true. It's living and alive. Psalms 1830 says this, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. Proverbs 30 verse 5 Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to all who come to him for protection. So guys, your prayers are important. God wants to hear your voice. God wants to hear you just say at times, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't have life figured out. But God, you do. And you find answers in his word and you let his Holy Spirit talk to you, and bring wisdom and common sense into your life. So men, prayer is important. Prayer is manly. Jesus did it. And he was the most toughest, manliest guy that ever walked the face of this earth. So men, man up. Man up and pray for your family. Guys, contact me at debellindustries at gmail.com or message me on Facebook, whatever works for you. If you need somebody to talk to, if you need an extra set of ears, just some common sense, some, some biblical guidance, some godly wisdom, I don't know it all, but man, I sure have learned a lot in 58 years of life. God has taught me a lot. No, I'm not perfect. No, I have not arrived. 
But guys, if you need someone to just open up to, talk with, I'm there for you. Buy me a sweet tea and we'll sit down and talk. We can talk on the phone. We can, whatever, whatever works for you. But I want to be there for you. So next time out, guys, it's going to be part three. We're going to talk about prayer and specific things to pray over your family. Some of you right now might be leaving for a baby, for conception, for a baby to be born into, into your home and into your life. And I have just some great, a couple of great stories about this to share. Right in our own family, how God was faithful because this young couple didn't quit. They didn't give up. They didn't say, oh, well, I guess it's not God's will that we have a baby. Hmm. We'll talk about that, too, next time out. So, gentlemen, I also remind you of this. Drive like a man. Put down the phone. Put down the food. Quit driving distracted. It kills people. It kills tow truck drivers and police officers, first responders. Distracted driving kills. Drive like a man. Drive like a man. Guys, always remember, God loves you, and so do I. Go out and make it a great one. Make it a great day. We'll see you next time.